Welcome to the only wrestling podcast that covers the WWE developmental system from its inception to modern day. From OVW to MCW to HWA, Deep South, FCW, and much more. Hosted by Brian Asbury and Mortimer Blankenship. Now let's dive into what could have been, what should have been. Welcome to Developmentally Speaking. Hey, before we get in this episode, can you do us a favor? Will you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? We you ring that notification bell? And if you would, give this video a like. Well, enough of that mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the episode. Let's talk developmentally speaking, glow up, and connecting through wrestling. Hey everybody, I'm Morty. And I'm Brian. And on today's episode of Developmentally Speaking, we have the Ripper himself, Paul Birchall. Paul, how's it going? It's going good. It's Sunday morning, and... uh. I've been awake for hours, as we just discussed. So. Yeah, yeah. Not uh, great. <laughs> been awake for hours on a Sunday morning. That's not not how how you how it ideally goes. But um, yeah. yeah, I feel feel that I'm I'm actually doing this and then um, have a wrestling show today. It's the first time we've ran on a Sunday, so. Cool. You running a show? Yes. Yeah. That's nice. Where about? Where is it? Um, it's in Seymour, yeah, Indiana. Says- Seymour, that's not far from me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The hometown of Rip Rogers. Yeah, I'm just outside, uh, just outside Cincinnati. That's, I, I was just what? in your area a few days well, ago. I'd rather, I'd rather be doing that than today. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Should have booked me. Um, I will happily book you <laughs> in the future. Trust me. <laughs> Do you know what? My cousin, my I was at my, I was at a cousin's wedding yesterday. And one of my cousins is like, so you, you doing any right? Re- because he's just, I was like, and my wife is like, uh, he never rules it out. And I was like, listen, if I could wrestle, I would wrestle. And my wife's like, yeah, okay. Because I have, I have three children that never saw me wrestle. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been to the odd thing. You know, my my yeah. oldest, you know, grew up and he grew up in the locker rooms and everything. But um, he's now a college freshman. But all my my other kids, you know, they never got to see me, so I'm always like looking out for something so they can at least see me wrestle. Okay, you know? uh, okay. So after the interview, <laughs> we'll talk about that for sure. Because I'm like, gonna di- I'll just I'll just ditch work today and I'll come and wrestle. Okay. I mean, it, if that was a possibility for real, I would be all about <laughs> it. Um, but I would actually like to promote it a little bit before you come. <laughs> I've done, I've done, I've done the odd run in over the years, so. Yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> um, but but yeah, the, the show that we like, I I I help book shows in Seymour and Brownstown, um, okay. Jackson County, Indiana. But the show is primarily yeah. based out of Madison, Indiana. So. Okay. It's it's even Madison's even a little bit closer to Cincy, like yeah. in a weird yeah. way. <laughs> uh, You're in Bengals land. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I another I guess the, the, another funny story real fast before we get started. Um, I was raised a Steelers fan mm. in Southern Indiana by my dad. I was raised I was raised an Eagles fan okay. actually. All right. Yeah. And and I was yeah. and I got married to a woman. Whose dad is a and and her are huge Bengals fans, so okay. they had to convert. It, I I'm I, I have slowly begun my conversion therapy um, right. to a Bengals fan. Um, That's smart. Now that they win, you know. Yeah, I I, I well I, I've made it clear. I said, look, I will always be a Steelers fan. I will always root. Yeah. I'll always root for the Steelers. I said, I'll root for the Bengals in any game except for against the Steelers. And they said, okay, we can deal with that. Which is fine because they're going to love it anyway because every time I root for the Steelers against the Bengals right now, they're going to win. I mean, that's how our family is. We are any – we hate, hate, hate Manchester United. Mm -hmm. Hate them. So any team playing them. Like I have a good friend who's a big Liverpool fan. If they're playing – like, you know, Liverpool are our big rivals in Man City. But uh, if we hate it, always hate Man United, hate yeah. them. So whoever's playing them, it doesn't matter. Uh, um, my boss at work's a big fan of, so I don't follow soccer much, but uh, is it Tottenham? Totten? Yeah, Tottenham, good team. Yeah, my big, neighbor, my big neighbor. fan of them, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, but let's get into this. I, I do apologize for, for going off on a weird tangent on weird things. So 
first question I'm going to ask you, you've probably been asked a million times, and it's uh, it can be the most interesting or most boring question that you've ever heard. What made you get into wrestling? Um, so, you know, in England, we had um, World of Sport on Saturday mornings, which was the, the old school, you know, um, wrestling there. And um, obviously, we always watched that, and kind of everybody watched it. And I grew up doing lots of sports, you know, pretty high level at different sports and everything. So, athlete, runner, uh, um, soccer, rugby, and in, in, in later in later life, as sort of a young adult, or my last couple of years of college, I kind of switched over to playing rugby, and then was playing um, for a couple of years there um, professional rugby, and then just had gotten you know just like anybody there I think I was working in the gym as well and I remember like on a Friday night it it would come on and I'd kind of watch it and I just kind of got more into watching the American product and that and then just kind of like with anything because I've always been a very much like oh how do do I do that why why, why can't I do that so I just uh, found out that you go to a school which is absolutely news to anybody ever getting into wrestling you go to like a wrestling school and went along and just kind of was fairly natural, you know. I'd, I was very athletic and very, very fit and everything. Yeah, so I'm on So I had a really good spatial awareness, and you know that would be an athlete and, and all that. I just, I, I guess, you know, as much of a natural as you can be in terms of your athleticism. So I had the athleticism, and then I just had a really good trainer, Mark Sloan, down in, um, uh, down in Portsmouth, uh, England, um, and he just was very good to me and and just brought me along at the right rate and everything and just kind of you know I think I was at a time where the where the where the British scene was starting to kind of take off again in a different kind of way and I kind of not rode that in or anything but I was a newer person on the scene a, a bigger guy and a bigger guy that could move well you know could be mm-hmm. athletic and all that and so it just kind of all kind of meshed together well and kind of went from there and I loved it and I I kind of left rugby behind, which. So how how was the the wrestling scene over there? You said it was just starting to come around, and. Yeah, you... so they'd had a, they'd had um you know, the 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 old school, you know quote unquote had had sort of gone away the world sport all that sort of that slower kind of stuff and it a lot you know I think it had been it had been it had been, growing, years before I got into it but hadn't really kind of taken off yet. And I just sort of came in right when, you know, you had sort of some people that were, you know, had a lot of big, big dreams for it and everything and kind of the right um, mentality and, and work rate to kind of get it going again. And then we're kind of getting in, you know, the, the U.S. indie scene also was, you know, was always there. But, it was you know, you started to have your Ring of Honor came along and all those kind of things. And it was kind of really exciting. And it was like, um, you know, it became kind of like a like a work rate sport you know again where it was just you know um you know it's just to you know watch a lot of the guys and i'm like yeah and i'm like I don't know, i'm not moving like a why, why, you know why is that and i'm like oh i'm like 80 pounds heavier that's what it is that's why i'm not quite as fast <laughs> kind of thing. but um it was it was growing you know we had guys like you know like i said mark sloan alex shane uh, and then they 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 were smart very smart because they they tapped they tapped into a lot of the the old school the guys that have been around the experienced guys like your drew mcdonald's which most people that ended up in the states with the with the with wwe drew mcdonald got them there in terms of you know he was kind of broke it was the agent who kind of got them in and i know a lot of people that did and just a lot of these people that you know they just like i said they tapped into the the right brain trust i guess of, of getting the sport to grow and then you know I I would say to people you know it's I came into them maybe probably five years too early I said I said had I come in not been like the first one for a while you know from Europe to have signed or something I would have been had had a different path a different route route in come in with a different developmental system like I would have you know I felt like I would have done very well in NXT and everything but again I would not change my time mm-hmm. in Louisville and my time with the people I was with and it was you know probably the best time of my career okay. <laughs> how long uh, were you doing the independent scene before your developmental deal came about like five or six years I think 
something like that. But I was just getting to a point where I was kind of at a bit of a crossroads of, you know, when I, when I got my deal from WWE, I also had um, you know, the possibility of going full time with like all Japan, and, uh, a couple of other like the Japanese. So I, I could have gone two routes, you know, I would say like career wise in terms of my wrestling, I probably chose the wrong right route in terms of my wrestling, in terms of my life, it was absolutely the best route to have taken. I uh, wouldn't change it for it at all, but, you know, probably going to Japan on a more full, full-time basis, which was kind of where I was heading, you know, and working mm-hmm. in Europe and that, I'd have probably come in with a lot more um, uh, clout or something, you know, coming in, because, you know, th- there was a time there, you know, through my, my time in uh, with the company that they were not touching a lot of these seasoned, excellent independent workers. I mean, but yeah, so we, we were, you know, they got guys on the roster and stuff. We would be like, oh, did you see? And, and they weren't touching these people for years. And we were like, you know, it was it was still that 250 pounds. I mean, not to the extent that in previous years, you know, when they, these guys, you had, it had to be six foot five minimum and blah, 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 this kind of thing. No, it wasn't as much that case, but there were definitely a lot of workers when they started signing some of these people. We were like, "Oh, cool! You know, uh, here they, they signed Chris Hero. Do you hear they signed Claudio or something like?" That. And we're like, "Oh my God! You know, this is going to be great. We could, you know, I was, there's people on the roster that have been on the roster, say, the last I don't know, five, six years, and times after that. That I'm like, God, I would have loved to work with them on that stage. You know, I remember I was just I was sort of in a transition phase on the show. And was kind of you know where you're not you're not doing a ton but maybe so i think i was doing something backstage or something and oh that was it i was filming some couple of backstage segments for something maybe i was on ecw or something and you know i'm gonna i worked uh, loki in a in a dark match they were taking a look at him or he was in the developmental which and i think we we managed to get together 10 minutes before we were going out which was what not unheard of there you know you mm-hmm. literally you were doing something, but you were on everybody else's schedule, you know, so it was kind of like, okay, let's get this done, because I've got a match in 40 minutes, and I've not met up with my opponent, but I remember, like, going to him after, you know, we had a, we had a great match together, we just kind of very much fill it out, just two guys that know how to work, and kind mm-hmm. of thing, and I said to him after, I said, it was actually a, a career goal, you know, to get to to get to be in the ring with you, like I, I, I you know, I, it's, a, it's a pleasure, you know. And I was the guy on the roster, kind of thing, but I was mm-hmm. bowing down because he was just so good. You awesome. know? I, I, someone I'd watched, but you know, we were, we were like, finally, we were getting these people. Now, we, everybody we were around were top talent, amazing. I mean, just, uh, brilliant, brilliant wrestlers, but they just went on a massive signing thing, and all these guys, and you were mm-hmm. like, God, if I could have gotten to work with him on that stage and stuff, but. You know, it was just, it's it's good. It's, it's how it should be. You should be taking the top talent and mm-hmm. guys that can, 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 can do it, can, can, can go in the ring. You know, you can't, you, you can never beat actual talent in the ring. You know, that's, right. that's the longevity. That's why these guys, they might leave that company, but 10 years later, they're still working. They're still getting booked. They're still there. You know, this, and I, I mean, there's so much, so much talent out there. It just, it's so, you know, it's, uh, it's exciting. You know, I've drifted away, obviously, from a lot of, you know, life takes over everything. You know, I still kind of keep abreast of certain things now and then. It's a it's, it's really good scene. Yeah. So how was that uh, transition from overseas to Louisville, Kentucky? That's, that's like two different worlds. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's... It was actually, you know, you're so excited to go, you can't believe it's going to happen, etc. Um, it's it's when you're at the uh, airport and you're saying goodbye to your little sister, and you're like, oh, and you're taking two bags to go migrate to another country, mm-hmm. hoping that it's going to be like a long term thing, you know. And of course, then there wasn't the uh, the ability to be as connected, you know. You really were moving to another country, and um, that's that's a, you know that's a lot of a lot of the things you know it's it's adapting to a new new environment you know i look at it now when i look at you know we follow a lot of soccer and football and um you know these they'll sign these players and they're but they're young guys and it's like there was something about them getting settled into their country in a new environment i mean it's a big deal it's you're suddenly now 
you've gone from this life to like, oh, I'm like starting again and i um, got a lot of pressure on me, you know, kind of thing. Um, got to find somewhere to live. You know, for the first f- three months, for foreign guys, which people don't know, is like you don't have, they don't have an ability to pay you initially uh, because you don't have a social security, you don't have anything like that. So you're like, <laughs> you're, you're just kind of, you know, you're, you're taken care of but just somewhat on your own, which is kind of like not settled, you know, and you're, you're living in a hotel basically because you, you know, I'm sure if you moved here from another part of the country, you know, how to establish yourself, but you're moving from, you're moving from another country. You're, you know, you're very reliant on um, kind of finding your feet, you know, and, you know, it's a, you know, guys that are in their twenties and stuff, they're trying to work stuff out mm-hmm. you know? and you're sudden, you're suddenly a professional athlete. You know, yeah. you're, you're you're expected. You know, you're going every day. You're you're working out every day. You know, so you're you know you're you're a twice two a day, three a day professional athlete suddenly. You know, in a very strange environment, especially being a foreigner. And yes, um, it would be you know, UK America. Yes, somewhat similar but completely different. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, it was. It was an experience, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Louisville, Kentucky was probably a bit of a, a culture shock from... What... It was, but I love Louisville. Like, we, you know, we, we're, we're a Kentucky fan. Like, we love, we love Kentucky. Like, I love, love Kentucky. We, you know, we love, love it here. Wouldn't How was... It. Oh, I agree. How was OVW? Fantastic different sort of different regimes different phases you know when you first come in it was still it was Jim Cornette booking and you know you didn't you know they you don't just get thrown on TV they don't just sort of say and you know you're, you're there there's a lot of talent there there's a lot of established guys there's a lot of this and you're kind of not really uh, talk about pecking order but you know it's not like you're gonna be thrown on TV just because you're a new sign in they've got an established storyline and it takes months to work their way in so you kind of come in and you know you just kind of you take what you can get um i moved to the roster very quickly before it was even established on ovw it was uh that kind of moved pretty quickly for me before i was settled as well before i was kind of settled Mm -hmm. you know here um i moved and i'm suddenly traveling and so that was kind of another change but OBW itself was fantastic and in different times we had different you know I feel like my time when I I came uh, I'd injured my knee I'd been doing the pirate thing and I needed to recover my knee and um, that time maybe that year after that and it was was fan- I mean I was just on fire that's when I did the ripper that's when I was just just killing people and it was just you know and that was with um, you know I think some of that Sometime before that, it had been like Paul Heyman booking, who was just, just brilliant, just great to work for, and then Al Snow, and he just, you know, he believed in me, and, and I, I really, and, and you know, it's so funny, like, listening to him, and I was always like, you know, listen, okay, and, you know, he'd talk about longevity and all this sort of thing to all of us, and you, you knew it was just going in one ear and coming out the other for a lot, so just like, I just want to get to the, they saw very much the short term got to get to the roster, got to do this, got to do, you know, and he's like, this isn't how it is to have a long career and all that. And it just kind of, you know, how to draw money, how to, you know, we're working these, we're working like four or five house shows a week. You're getting so seasoned and I was, you know, I was getting to main event every single night and I'm going 35, 40 minutes. And so you're doing a, a, a six man tag with just, I mean, the talent you were in the ring with, you know, I'm facing Colt Cabana and Sean Spears every night for a week and and, Jimmy Snooker and Cliff Compton and just all these like guys you're getting to work with. Uh, Chet Jet, fantastic worker and just, but you're going and going and going and learning how, learning how to, uh, you want to return the next month, but we've got to make them want to come and to try and build the crowds and then how to do it. it was, it was a good education. It was really good. So I'm just checking that connection here. Absolutely. So I, I love how, how he said, uh, how he was like, and I was doing my pirate thing. He kind of skirted over it like it wasn't one of the best gimmicks of all time. 
Oh, I was happy to. I was happy to do it. Oh, I, I tell you what, I, I got like it's it's literally in my top ten of favorite gimmicks in professional wrestling yeah. of all time. I love pirates. Wow. I lo- I, lo- I the 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 swinging on the rope, the, 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 all that. Oh my god, just <laughs> I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, the rope wasn't even like I literally was getting ready to debut it. I'd done some dark matches and I'd done a bunch of backstage promos, and I was actually going to have my like in ring in ring on TV. And it's during the day, and I'm in the locker room, and uh, and. It, Randy Orton walks in. He's like, "Hey, do you see a rope? Like, well, he's like, you got a rope. You're gonna swing down." I go, "Hey, no, 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 that happen." And I walk out and there's this, this, this rope, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, okay." So the first slide down, I realized that you should wear gloves because I tore my hands up. Yeah. And it was actually um, sh- uh, showing showing Vince my entrance that I blew out my ACL. And uh, just destroyed my knee. <laughs> destroyed it. And uh, yeah, so got through the match that night. But I, it was just, I was, I just, I completely like destroyed my knee. Dang. So what's so, Paul Virtual up to today? Today? Like nowadays. I, yeah, nowadays. Um, so I'm a, a my, Batteries turning off. Uh, I'm a, so I, I work. I'm a I'm a nurse practitioner. Um, I work in an in a emer- emergency setting, and then I have four children. That basically that's what I do. That keeps me busy. Oh yeah. So um, I have a older two middles and a very young one. We have a little little baby girl who's almost eleven months. Um, Congratulations. And yeah, thank you. We just keep ourselves busy. Uh, with with life and everything that comes with it, um, when I when I left wrestling, um, I was already actually uh, trained as a firefighter, uh, EMT paramedic, and went to nursing school, became a nurse practitioner, and eventually, you know, after about really good uh, like a about a twelve year uh, fire career, moved over to medicine full time, which is always the plan. My wife and I had a had a plan for. You know, her would be going through school, then me and everything. So, you know, she's a nurse practitioner as well. So, we, yeah, we're good. We 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 uh, we live in um, Union, Kentucky, which is just uh, twenty minutes south of Cincinnati. Uh, yeah. Love it here. Um, and yeah, we uh, we go we go we go down east quite a lot. We have uh, uh, property down there and spend a lot of time in the woods and just doing all that. So yeah. Good. You're always over that way. Yeah, I am always over that way for sure. Yeah, I'm, I I like uh, shooting through uh, like Cumberland and going to. East, I like East Tennessee. I'm a big. I like, yeah. Like. Yeah, we go we Moorhead area. We we love love it down there. Oh yeah, Moorhead, Kentucky. Yeah. We're working on our cottage down there, and yeah, it's it's good. We uh, we're good. The just kiddos keep us busy. Uh, yeah. But I couldn't. I couldn't. I mean, I'm very blessed with my with my kids. Wonderful, three boys and a little girl. So, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely will keep you busy. I've got three boys, seven, six, and five. Yeah. So it's oh, okay. everybody's well, flying yeah. everywhere all the time. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's some something always going on. But yeah, they're good. We uh, we live in a lovely area. We yeah we we pretty much just keep ourselves busy. I think like anybody with kids does. Yeah, I have two kids dogs and two cats. Um, I still keep I still keep real fit. Um, yeah, it's kind of. I always enjoyed you know the Ripper Paul Burchill. I always felt like that class of guys never got their proper chance. It just seems like they gave you like two weeks and then you were gone. Yeah, you know there, I mean? there was that. You know, it, it yes, you're there. There's an aspect definitely of of. You didn't get your your and there were tons and there were lots of there were lots of guys that came through right at that time and you were like oh they, they dropped the oh, they, they they could have you're, they're so talented why did they not get you know get to get that let them take off let them let them do this and there's lots like that there's also the thing once you're there it 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 it, it, it is down to you you they're handing you and saying 
if you work hard, if you do this, if you grab it, if you take it, you will. You know, and it, yes, I got to a point on that show where my, um, you know, I was, I was trusted and I found my, my, my niche as a guy that could go in with the champ or go in with the new guy and I was, bull, you know, described as bulletproof on TV. You know, it, it, you know, I remember being in the ring on a, you know, I think, was it ECW was live at the time and I was in with somebody and they just blew something and it was just this natural you know i remember afterwards that the agents like it's like you know and he effed up and blah, blah, blah. so the paul cover that he's a professional he's really good you know i was like okay you know but it was this you know i i got to the point where i was like okay well i'm here as a i'm here as a worker now like it's i'm and yeah so you know it was a guy that could go in and kind of put someone through torture and get beat kind of thing and 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 i mean i was getting my my opportunity and it was my opportunity again you have an opportunity of being allowed in the building i mean mm -hmm. yes people can always go oh they never pushed me there so did you do everything that you needed to do were you doing 200 squats went around the ring in the day or were you sitting in catering you know mm -hmm. were you were you doing the extra work? now i could have worked so much harder and i worked pretty hard in my work rate in the ring and, and all that and my condition you know you 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 know, I look at it now, I'm like, oh, I could have done a lot more, you know, I wasn't going to classes on my day off just to cut, just to roll, just to do, just to do extra, you know, so you look at it, yes, I, I could have had other, and like, it's what I mean, where I came in, I feel if I'd have been a, some years later, you know, it would have been, would have been different, but again, you can always, you can always, I'm not a big, like, oh, I didn't get my, you know what, I, I, I got there, mm -hmm. and I showed up every week, and you know, you, you get into this thing of like, oh, I'm here now, and it's, oh, but then you get a little sad face when you're like not, and there were so many other, like where you're like, you know, you have legitimately a reason to be sad or upset about something, but again, you were being let in the building, mm -hmm. and it was, a lot of it was down to you, you know, so there are guys that purely just by being, working hard and doing it, they they do it so you know yes they'll always be sort of whining saying oh i didn't get my we, none of us did mm -hmm. but there's a lot of guys that made you know had a lot more success a lot more careers that just worked a little harder and and rode that in you know and like i said there was a point where i was get out to get a very big kind of change big push big kind of gonna get really get in the mix and it was right at a time Kind of, you know, it, you know, I had to, I was away for six weeks. Uh, we had to physically go to another country and and all of that. And then, and then it wasn't like it, 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 you know, when you miss, when you miss that sort of that little window, it passes by, and you have to kind of try and get it on the next, next go round kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of came back to TV and was back to just having matches, doing the thing. So it was just, you know everything happens for a reason you know my career went the right way it was supposed to to put me in the position that i was supposed to be in in terms of the rest of my life and i again wouldn't change it it seems like another world away completely mm -hmm. to be honest oh yeah well you made an impact on me um on more you know being from southern indiana we got to see um you before you were on you know the main roster so all all of that is very special to us mm -hmm. and just Thanks. I wanted to say thank you for the impact that you made. My appreciate. Absolutely. Hey everybody, it's Morty. It's Brian. And thank you for watching today's episode of Developmentally Speaking. If you could, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to punch that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we go live or drop a new video every Monday. Well, thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you on the next Developmentally Speaking.